What's happening my fellow geeks and geek heads? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today it is a tutorial on how to make a flexible urethane casting. I have here a 3D print of a neck seal slash piece of neck armor that was done by Benny of Bendable FX. I then went ahead and did the body work, cleaned it all up, smoothed it up. I then took a silicon mold of the neck armor. It was a silicon mold made with pinky seal and then a two piece fiberglass shell jacket mother mold. So the original idea is Benny and I want to do a one to one scale mech armored bust. The Batfleck look where he is armored up to take on Superman. So not only can this neck seal be used for say a mech armor cosplay but any other cosplay in general that requires a neck seal or something to look uniform or just nice and neat around the neck area of a cosplay. So we are going to be doing a flexible urethane casting and for that we are going to be using F70. It is a fast set urethane from Barnes and the thing about urethane is when it comes to flexible castings you really have to keep working with it. You can't just slush it about like a rigid resin and leave the coat to dry. You have to keep working with this stuff until it gels and it sets properly. Now we also have some polyurethane black tint here also from Barnes. So the mix ratio for F170 is 50 to 100. So I'm very used to you know 100 to 100, 1 to 1 mix ratio so I always have to keep that in mind. And it dries a honeycomb color, so you only need a little bit of black tin. It'll go a long way, trust me. So ideally, I'd like to do three or four slush coats, and we actually have to glove our hands up and keep working the urethane around in the mold until it starts to gel to get a nice even consistency because what urethane tends to do against silicon is bead away, much like water on skin, unless you keep working with it, you'll come back to it if you've left it too early and it's all beaded away and sunk down to the bottom. So this is a relatively easy mold, nothing too complicated, not a lot of undercuts, whereas you have something like a Batman cowl or a helmet can be a bit tricky getting in there, especially in the chin area. So of course our first step is we're gonna glove up. I am also gonna use a respirator for this because F170 or the F series can get a bit fuming. You just don't wanna be inhaling that type of stuff. The working time for this is five minutes and demold is two to three hours. So this is great. I have used slow set urethanes in the past for slush coats and castings and it is a pain in the ass, I can tell you that much, because you have to stay with the piece. Each coat takes about 40 minutes before it starts to gel. All right, we're gonna get our scales, our mixing cup and our mixing stick and let's get to it. Okay, so the first coat has pretty much dried. It is starting to get very, very tacky. So by looking at this, I think we're gonna do three more slush coats. And the one thing you really have to look out for when doing a flexible urethane casting is any high points. Granted, these are quite soft high points. Anything with a sharp edge, you've really got to build it up in terms of just keep working it whilst it's about to gel. Over this area here, it's a lot more uniform, but here we do need to go in and do a bit more work when it comes to spreading this stuff around with a gloved hand once it starts to gel. Okay, we are the second slush coat in and already we have built up a really nice consistency. As you see before, I was using some spare disposable brushes as well as a gloved hand. Disposable brushes work really well in terms of getting a nice even surface. So we're going to repeat this step two more times. We're then going to let it cure and then we'll talcum powder it up, remove it from the mold. We'll then cut away all the excess, the flashing and the inner part here so we can wear this piece give it a try, give it a road test, and call it a day.
Now, you're probably all thinking, Chris, we're all done and dusted, but wait, there's more. So, this seal is pretty much all done and you can pull it on and off over your head, but over time you do run the risk of weakening the structure of the piece and one day it may eventually snap. So for the final step of this tutorial, Geeks and Geekheads, we're gonna add a Velcro closure at the back. And for that, we're gonna be using some self-adhering Velcro strips. We're also gonna be using some cheap and nasty super glue because this stuff works a treat and sticks like shit to a blanket. Once that's all done, we can try the neck piece on and call it a day. And there we have it guys, a flexible urethane neck seal. Now these are actually available to purchase on my Etsy store and they will come with a Velcro closure. If you had any other colors in mind, I can tint the urethane. So just let me know if you do want to get one, please leave a comment in the purchasing section and we'll try and figure something out if you want a custom neck seal. Now of course the foundation for this neck seal is a one to one scale bat fleck mech suit bust that Benny and I are going to be constructing and I thought I'd love to offer these to you guys because they can go to other parts of any other cosplayers. You can cut them here so you can get rid of the chin area and leave them open for a nice decorative collar for your cosplays. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Wherever you are in the world, have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly, and until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.